People say it's the light. There's just something different about the colors of the outer cape. Tucked between Provincetown and Wellfleet, in the town of Truro, the palette is uniquely pure. See, more than 70% of Truro is national seashore. It's protected, unspoiled. In fact, this landscape in many ways hasn't changed for hundreds of years. To many, it's that very untamed landscape that's so appealing. For well over a century, this town has been a haven for artists of all kinds. At the town landing for the Pamet River, students in a painting class capture glimmering grays and lush greens. There is a real quiet specialness that Truro brings that is um, really different. There's a lot of reflected light coming off the ocean and on a day like today, it's very crisp and clean and bright. And so you, know, you can see the colors in the shadows. Truro's most well-known artist, of course, is Edward Hopper. For decades, artists have flocked here to walk in Hopper's shoes, studying the scenes Hopper painted. Beth Chapman knows a thing or two about Hopper. He painted her family's farm in South Truro. Now she runs Hopper House Tours. This was painted five times by Edward Hopper because he lived so close. He lived just across the street. And so he painted it from the corner of Ryder Beach Road and Old County Road, looking down at it. He painted really close to it, and then he painted this, which is one of his more abstract um, impressionist paintings with a lot of negative space. Hopper was intrigued by the shadows that fell on the Marshall House. I think it's wonderful. Joan Marshall remembers when she first saw the painting of her home. I stood there and wept. It's absolutely exquisite. It truly is. Many artists have felt that it is one of the better examples of what he loved doing, painting light on the side of houses. Overlooking Vineyard Sound is picturesque Nobska Light. In 1828, the original light saw traffic totaling 10,000 vessels. Though the waters are less traveled today, Nobska remains an aid to mariners. This is one of 31 lighthouses that we maintain within Sector Southeast of New England. And this one happens to be the, you know, one of the favorites, of course, because it's right here in Woods Hall. Captain John Kondratowicz commands the Coast Guard station based here. Until 2013, the lighthouse was home to commanding officers. I was the first one that did not have that opportunity, unfortunately. We're in the process right now of signing an agreement with the town of Falmouth where they're going to maintain the property and licensee. We will still maintain the light, the navigational aid, but they'll maintain the property and open it up. Certainly the lighthouse is going to have to stay. It is still a navigational aid. But the lighthouse keeper's house was the thing that the town really is taking over also. We really feel that that is a part of the mission to be able to protect that and protect the vision that people have of this spot here. It's a very popular spot to stop because the road goes right by and it is a very accessible lighthouse. That's one of the reasons it's so important to the community. Catherine Bumpus is executive director of the Friends of Nobska Light, the new keepers. The Coast Guard is not in the preservation business and they have found ways to partner with organizations to preserve the lighthouses because they are so iconic and important to many communities. Our job is going to be preservation of the historic structure. When complete, visitors will once again be allowed to climb the tower to view the original fourth order Fresnel lens. Nobska is a beautiful place. It is an easy place to come to. There is a parking space, there is a gate. Walk in, take a look, take a picture, peer in the windows, enjoy the beautiful view, enjoy the water. It is terrific. The Simmons Homestead Inn in Hyannisport is home to an unusual collection of collections. Animal-themed rooms in the inn, cats. A stair, I am working on it. 28 at last count. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Not allowed in the inn. 518 different single malts, as in scotch. I think it's the largest in the country. And cars, red racing cars. Innkeeper Bill Putman says he doesn't mean to be a collector, it just happens. I'm not compulsive or anything like that, but one thing seems to lead to another, and it's something like with the cars. If one's fun, well, two's even more fun. And you know, three's okay. And on and on and on. In here, there are probably 40 different shades of red. With one exception, this British racing green. The Lotus Elite down there is, which is my pride and joy. 
guy spent 15 years restoring it and better than do it. The car collection grew in sheds behind the inn until there was enough to call it a museum. Putman named it Toad Hall after the children's book, The Wind in the Willows. Putman's Toad Hall welcomes visitors. It's even a stop on the local trolley tour. Can we come in and see your cars? Yeah, we do charge admission, but um, cats are free. And in case you didn't notice, the cats are red too.